When Christ gave me this song, he said, I don't see you as a burden to love. I see you as someone I get to love. And he's saying it to you too. The one I get to love through all the years. The one I get to love through all the tears. You're the one I get to suffer for. And for you, I'd suffer more. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. And I just can't hide it. I'm excited because it is February 14th. It's the big day. It is love day. It is Valentine's Day. I don't know if anybody got you a gift for this Valentine's Day. I don't know if you have a romantic partner. I don't know if you have someone that's going to tell you, I love you today. But I'm telling you right now, I love you and I got you a gift. I have a special, special gift to you that I promise you is going to be one of the best gifts you ever receive in your whole life. I say that because I received this gift. This gift God gave me completely changed my life. It came at a time where I really, really needed it, right? I was on a walk. I was actually in a great place mentally. I had finally got to a place of truth and like peace. And God was like, you should write a song now. And I went to write this song, which is going to be my gift to you. I'm telling you that right now. I'm giving you a song for free that I promise you is going to bless you on this Valentine's Day. But bear with me real quick while I just break down how I got this song, how God gave me this gift. I'm on this walk and I feel the voice of God or, you know, that still small voice, that whisper in my spirit, in my soul, not like out loud, but I just feel like God is saying, you should write a song now. You're in such a great place mentally. And I went to go write this song and I went to this beat website that I always go to when I want to write songs and it popped up. There's only five beats showing and then you click show more and then you can see all the hundreds and hundreds of beats that are on this site. But before I did that, I noticed this beat I never seen and I felt like I was like that one. I click it, and as soon as I open my mouth, this gift from God just comes through me. And this is how a lot of my songwriting experiences are. It feels like I'm just being a vessel, and I'm kind of like Russ described it before perfectly. He's like, I don't feel like I create music. I feel like I discover it, like I'm a vessel for something that's coming through me, and it's my job to steward it and you know, do a good job with what I'm being given. And this song starts coming out of me and these words hit me like a ton of bricks in a good way, really like a blanket, just wraps me up. And the first thing that comes out of my mouth is, you're the one I get to love. And I was like, Phew. and it sounded beautiful too, like, you're the one I get to love. And I was like, you're the one I get to love. Ooh, that's, tell me more. Tell me more, God. What else? What else? And I'm like. You're the one I ain't giving up on. I'm like, you're the one I ain't giving up on. You're the one I got to love. You're the one God gave me to love. You're the one I get to love. You're the one I get to love. I'm like, this is a dope hook. Now, at the time while I'm singing it, I'm thinking about my wife who I'm separated from. And I'm like, word, she's someone I get to love. That's dope. That's a dope perspective, like to be grateful. Like I got her to love. She's the one I get to love. Don't see it as a burden. She's someone I get to love. But then I start writing the verse. And the first thing that comes out of my mouth is the one I get to love through all the years. I'm like, okay, that's dope. The one I get to love through all the tears. I'm like, that's, that's deep. Then I said something that made me go, wait a minute. Who said that? You're the one I get to suffer for, and for you, I'd suffer more. I said, what did I just say? You're the one I get to suffer for, and for you, I'd suffer more. Where is this coming from? I don't know if I feel like that. And when I said it, I got like a little choked up. Like even just now when I, when I thought about it, I got a little choked up. I don't know if you peeped it, but... I was like, the one I get to suffer for, and for you, I'd suffer more. I was like, that sounds like some real love. I don't know if I approach my relationship with my wife like that. And I just sat there for a minute before I even got the next line, which was beautiful too. It said, you're the one I, that I get to forgive, 
you're the one that gets to forgive me. And I was like, yo, th this is something deeper than, you know, Andrew's thinking right now. This is coming from God. And then it hit me. God wasn't talking to me, you know, necessarily about Tina. The Christ in me was telling me that he sees me that way. I'm like, wait, what? God, you see me as someone you get to love? Not like a burden? Someone you get to suffer for? I thought about these four lines. Those two especially. You're the one, I said, the one I get to suffer for. And for you, I'd suffer more. And I just, I couldn't get off that. I just stopped writing the song and I just sat there in tears. And I'm like, God, someone I, you get to suffer? That's how you see me? Christ that lives in me? You see me as someone you get to suffer for, and for me, you'd suffer more. And I, and, I, and I started praying, and I started talking to God. I'm like, God, but Jesus said, Father, if there's any other way, take this, take this cup away. I, I don't, I don't want to do this. I don't want to go on the cross and die this horrific death and get tortured. And I felt like God just revealed to me in that moment, the spirit was willing. The spirit that lived in Jesus, the Christ I sent him to do that because I loved you that much. I didn't see that as a burden at all. I, I saw that as something I get to do. The flesh was weak. Jesus told you that. He said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus was fully God and fully man. His, in his humanity, he's like, I don't want to feel that pain. But in his divinity, that spirit that lived in him was like, no, I get to do this. Let's go. I'm about to get my, my babies back. I'm about to get my hands back on my children. I'm going to get to love them from, from a place of intimacy, from connection. I'm going to get to touch them again. I'm going to get to live inside of them. I'm going to get to experience life through them. I'm going to get to experience, you know, oneness with you again. I'm going to get to see things through your eyes and understand you. I'm going to get to answer your prayers personally. I'm going to get to have access to you again like we had before I formed you in your mother's womb. And I was like, yo, it was heavy. I'm like, God doesn't see me as a burden to love. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Grace. There's a verse that Paul says in the Bible. He says, I know your mind will never fully comprehend, or understand or grasp the magnitude, right? The height, the, the width, the length, the depth, the breadth of God's love for you. But I pray that you will come to know it. That you would know it intimately. Because if you do, you would walk in the fullness of God. And, and I never understood that verse until that moment. Because after that, after I realized God doesn't see me as a burden of love, it was like an epiphany for me. And I'm hoping that this song, like when you hear the song, you hear it as Christ, the Christ in you speaking to you and telling you, this is how I feel about you. I don't see you as a burden of love. I see you as someone I get to live through, someone I get to give to, right? When you start praying to God from that heart posture, from a place of knowing that God loves you so much, he sent Jesus to die for you so he can have oneness with you again, that you came from God in the first place. Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you, right? I formed you with my holy hand, so you couldn't have been unholy. You couldn't have been dirty yet. This Dirty World got its hands on you. The song track two on my EP, The Love Transfer, is called All the Way Clean. And, and the first verse, I say, before you formed me in my mama womb, before I ever had a trauma wound, before this world got its dirty hands on me, God had his holy hands on me and he had good plans for me. That's straight out of Jeremiah 1.5. And that's the truth. God does not see you as this dirty, filthy rag, this disgusting sinner. He sees you. As someone who got dirty when he came into this dirty world and someone that he loved so much, he sent Jesus Christ to put his hands back on you, right? To redeem you, to lay his life down. He sent that spirit of Christ, that, that spirit that lived in him, that, that Holy Spirit of love sacrificial, agape, unconditional, I will never leave you nor forsake you love to dwell in this vessel 
who would be led fully submitted by, by to this spirit, right? Who would speak only the words of that spirit, who would walk obediently even to the point of death and torture and still honor God and walk in his purpose so that we can be redeemed. God so loved the world, he gave Jesus. That's my paraphrased version of John 3.16. But I realized he he so loved me. He, he loves me that much. He sees me as someone he would suffer for. For me, he would suffer more. He would do a couple more hours on the cross, right? That's what he told me. And that's what I want to tell you and really allow him to tell you through this song, which is my gift to you for Valentine's Day this year. I promise you. If you really receive this song, it's going to change your life. Like for me, knowing that I wasn't a burden to love, it just set me free because I don't know if I just attracted or chose people that made me feel like I was a burden to love in romantic relationships. I know growing up as a child, I felt like a burden. I had deep abandonment wounds as a child, as an adolescent, as a young adult. Uh, I kept experiencing what I perceived to be abandonment. And um, I kept, you know, it kept reinforcing that narrative that I had in my mind that you're a burden to love. People don't see you as, you know, worthy enough, as good enough to be valued, you know, to be loved. You are difficult to love. And that's why people keep leaving you. And, you know, when you feel that way about yourself, it's hard to move forward in life. It's hard to receive you know, blessings and progress and prosper because you don't really feel like you deserve it. And and really, it's not about deserving. It's about knowing that you are worthy of it because God says so. God says, you're my son. You came from me. I want you to live like the son of a king that you are, the king of kings, right? I'm a child of the king of kings. So I guess that kind of makes me a king too, right? Um, But yeah, it changed the way I see myself. It changed the way I pray. Right. I no longer pray to God like, God, I'm sorry to bother you again. I know I'm burdening you with my problems. Can you please do this for me? It was like God was like, I get to give to you. You're the one that I get to give to. You're the one that I get to live through. Like God is like, let's do it. I get to show up for you. I get to be your hero today. I get to be the one that you're like, God did it again. What? God loves me. I get to be the father that got you this good and perfect gift. All of this is in the Bible. Like if we as parents can and who are sinners, who are a hot mess, who don't have unlimited resources, I'm adding a little something. Um, if we try to get our kids good gifts, how much more will the father give us? Right. You think he did, he's going to give you a snake when you ask for, you know, roses? No. God knows how to give great gifts. His gifts don't come with no unnecessary toil, no burden, like his blessings are blessings for real. God has been showing up for me my whole life. And I finally realized he wasn't burdened by it. He was like, no, I got to do that. You're someone I get to love. And I'm just telling you, it will change your life if you really receive this revelation. So my gift to you on, on this Valentine's Day, my gift to everyone, my gift to Anybody out there who may be feeling unloved today, who may be feeling like a burden, is this song. I promise you, these words are going to feed your soul. All you have to do to get this gift is just, you can comment, you know, in, 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 the, in the comment section. You could just say, I want the gift. Or you could send me a DM, say, I want the gift. Like, just tell me you want the gift. I will DM you the link um, and you can get it for free. The one I get to love is now free on the lovetransfer.net. Again, I will send you the link. We ain't got to talk about the link no more. I know the algorithm hates when we talk about links. So just tell me you want the gift. I'll send you the gift. And while you're on the site, you'll be able to check out snippets from the other four songs on the album. And you'll have an opportunity to be like, you know what? I want to enjoy that entire project. It sounds like it's amazing. And all you have to do to get the whole project is give a gift of any amount. We're calling it a love offering. This project is a love offering from me to you. Now you can offer any gift, right? Like a cent if you want to, and you'll get the album. Um, I had somebody give $30, somebody give $50, somebody gave $300, and it's all so appreciated. But the greatest gift you can give me is a gift 
uh, a cheerful gift, a gift that you're happy to give, right? If you can't afford to give $300, don't give $300. But if you can afford to be like, you know what? This song alone that I just got for free blessed me so much. I want to give you 20 bucks and I'll take the whole album, you know, then thank you. But another gift that you can give me that I would love even more than that. I would love for you to give me one cent and share this project with your friends and your family and your loved ones. Right. Give them this gift. That would mean the world to me. Obviously, if you could support financially, that would be great, too. But if you can't support financially and you can still share it in your story, on your reels, like this song All The Way I Have up there is about, you know, celebrating that you've been washed clean by the love of God. And um, like if, if you've been baptized, like make an Instagram, TikTok reel of you, your baptism video t with that song playing in the background. That would be a gift to me. Like. Share this project. People need this love. It's called the love transfer. I'm trying to transfer the love that I received from God to others because the greatest gift that I received was the understanding, the revelation that I am truly unconditionally loved by my heavenly father, that there's a Christ in me that sees me as someone he gets to love. And the best thing about this gift is it doesn't stop with me. It changes the way that I show up for others, right? If I really am filled with love, like there's a song on the project called Oceans, probably a lot of people's favorite song just vibe-wise, like it's such a good bop. But I, I liken being tapped into this source of love. Like Jesus said, um, if you drink from me, like I am the living water, you drink from this well, to the woman at the well, he said this. He said, if you drink from this well, you'll never thirst again. I have unlimited supply of water, right? And I'm like, listen, I'm tapped into the well that never runs dry. I got oceans of love on the inside of me. Because I'm connected to God, the source of love, the water, the living water, I got tons of water to pour out on others, right? So now if my wife or someone else out there in the world is struggling to, to feel loved, they're, they're not filled with that living water. They're not tapped in. Anybody out there that's not tapped in and... I don't look at them like, okay, well, listen, I'll water your withering grass if and only if you can water mine, right? You got to give what, what I'm giving you. If you can reciprocate, I'm cool. Like, no, I'm tapped into an unlimited supply of water. I'll water my own grass. My grass is thriving. I got the most, the nicest grass on the block. So now I get to water other people's grass because I'm tapped in. I'm tapped into oceans, I still got oceans. I still got so much love for you. I still got so much more. I'm not done pouring it out. I'm blessed that I get to pour it out because I get to love you. That Christ that lives in me doesn't want to just love me. He's like, no. And through you, I get to love them and her and him and, and him and her. And, and oh, I get to love your daughters. You, I get to love your daughters through you. Oh, I get to love your wife. I get to love your mom. I get to love that person that hurt you. I get to love your, your quote unquote enemy. That person who's so broken, he did something to really hurt you. I get to love him, right? There's been people that have betrayed me right now in ways that I ain't never been betrayed, that I show up for, that I remind that they are loved by God. I could never do that if I wasn't tapped in to the ocean of living water. If I hadn't first received that love from God. But now I get to show up for the rest of the world. And I promise you, being able to love people is the greatest gift that you will ever receive in life. Jesus said it is more blessed to give than to receive. Everybody thought he was just talking about money. When you think about that verse with the context of love, like it is more blessed to give love than to receive love. Like for real? Yes, because the Christ is most fulfilled in the giving of itself. And if you are tapped into Christ, you will find that you are most fulfilled when you are giving that love to others. I used to show up in the world, I promise you, as someone so wounded, so unsure he was worthy of love, feeling so unvalued, feeling like such a burden, having this whole inside of me the size of Africa 
and trying to fill it by getting the whole world to love me. Like, I want to be famous. I want people to love me, Andrew, so that I know I'm loved, so that I believe that I'm worthy of love. Now I don't do that. Like, I'm an artist with incredible music, and I haven't posted on TikTok since October. Like, I post once a month on Instagram. Like, I'm struggling to make this content to promote this album, but I'm not doing it to promote me or this album. I'm doing it because I believe in the gift that I'm carrying. I believe in the gift that I'm about to give you, starting with the one I get to love. I believe that it will transform you. I see this not as a burden to make this video, to shoot, to light, to edit, to do all this stuff that you got to do to put out content. Like, even though it's like, this ain't what I want to be doing with my time. I'm it's Valentine's Day. I'm picking up my daughters from school. I want to go shopping for their gifts. Like, there's other things I could be doing. But I'm like, no, I'm still going to do that. I'm going to make time for that. But this is not a burden to me right now because I know that in doing this, I'm going to get the opportunity to transfer some of this love that I received from God to others. And that is what fulfills me more than anything else in this life. So it is a gift to me to be able to give you this gift. So I pray that you go receive this gift, that you do yourself a favor and you allow yourself to experience the gift that is the love transfer, especially this free gift that is the one I get to love because I'm telling you, if you let this song sink into your spirit, it is going to transform you. I've seen people listen to this song, grown men, and they just start weeping. They don't know what's happening to them. They're not even like churchgoers or nothing. They're just like, I don't know what that song just did to me, but it did something. <laughs> it did something. And I, I'm like, yeah, it did that to me too. When God gave it to me, it did that to me. It is a gift, and I pray that you enjoy it today. So happy Valentine's Day. I love you. I love you. I love you. But God loves you more. Peace.